meeting is being recorded. Perfect. Okay, so welcome to the first uh, monthly uh, webinar in the what we're starting as a monthly IMAP webinar series about various topics pertaining to IMAP invasives here in New York State. Um, the next uh, webinar that will be after this one in February is from Jennifer Dean and it will be about confirming records. So uh, feel free to sign up for that uh, on our website at nyimapinvasives.org. And uh, we'd also like to put in a quick welcome to Mitchell O'Neill, who's a new uh, staff person here on the IMAP Invasives team. And he will be uh, helping with end user support. So you'll be hearing from him um, a lot over the next few months. Um, so we welcome Mitchell. Okay, so let's dive right into IMAP Web Map Services. And some quick background here is from, uh, to give a quick story, there's a website called NIAS, which is the New York State Invasive Species uh, Information, it's a clearinghouse of invasive species information across the state. And essentially, we here at IMAP shared uh, static maps uh, to the uh, NIAS in the past for species distribution. So we produce these heat maps um, for certain species, hydrilla, for example, uh, in this uh, map. And um, they worked very well at the time, and they, um, you know, provided a relatively, uh, they provided distribution of species across the state. Um, however, with IMAP invasives and more and more people contributing data, um, over time, uh, these maps were, you know, increasingly becoming out of date, and we had to update them frequently. Um, and so this, you know, posed a bit of a of an issue. And now with IMAP three, um, we're able to take that sort of in a different direction. Now we're able to provide interactive maps of those species. Uh, for all the various species profiles, which draw data directly from IMAP3. So this is just, you know, an early example, which we'll get back to later in the presentation, but this just sort of, sort of shows um, where we're working towards in terms of being able to have real-time access to data from IMAP invasives in your own uh, map or in your own mapping tool and that, that type of thing. So uh, just to back up, though, um, let's sort of clarify exactly, you know, what web map services are. Essentially, they're an internet service that deliver, uh, delivers map image tiles or geographic data to mapping applications. So essentially what happens is you have a map or a web mapping application, and it makes a request for data within a certain a geographic area. And then uh, the map service will return either map tiles, uh, which are actually image files, or the actual geographic data that is behind uh, the maps. And some uh, quick terminology in the ESRI vernacular. Uh, you may ref you may see uh, any web map service that generates map tiles as a map service, and any service that uh, returns geographic data as a feature service. So, just in case you see those terms throughout today or you know in the future, that's generally what what those are referring to in the Esri uh, sort of world. So, here's uh, just sort of a visual example of what this looks like. Basically, I have a map here on the right, and it's in ArcGIS Online, Green Lake State Park area. And let's say I have just the, uh, the presence records from IMAP3 I want to view in the map. So what happens is the map will make a request to um, the IMAP uh, map server. So in this case, we're, we're requesting the image uh, tiles. And the map server will then respond with an actual image that 
the uh, map, the ArcGIS Online map, actually renders right in the, in the map view. So it's taking that image file and it places it uh, within that bounding box that was requested. So this is uh, one way of, of web map service, uh, you know, utilization. Um, the next method is, again, through requesting the geographic data through a feature service. And it, it works fairly similar. Um, the map makes a request for the data in this map area. IMAP then returns the actual data records that are behind uh, the, the data that's within that area. So, for instance, there are about 56 records here. Uh, this one is just expanded as an example, uh, Fragmites record at the given coordinates. And so then the web map service actually will render those points at the geographic data. So it does some math and figures out where on the map to place all of those points. So there's two different ways of accessing the same data. And I'll, later on, I'll describe some of the advantages of, of using one or the other uh, method. So bringing this a little more specific to IMAP now, um, the IMAP web map services are powered by Esri ArcGIS server environment. And they also are the same exact thing that's helping to drive the main IMAP interface. So if we go to IMAP Invasives online and you see uh, the map and all of the, as you pan and, and scroll the map, that's that data is being returned by the IMAP web map services. So you're accessing essentially the same, uh, you know, data that the main IMAP interface is using. And, of course, you can also, you know, use it in your own um, tools such as ArcGIS Online or other ArcGIS or other general GIS software. And you also are limited to the data for which you have permission to access. So you can authenticate with the web map services and you'll get any of that advanced data you may have access to uh, as an IMAP invasive user, um, such as treatment uh, details and uh, not detected records and those, those types of layers. So all of the authentication is integrated right in with your IMAP Invasives account. And another quick note, uh, you don't really have to worry about the details of this slide, but what I'm trying to show here is that the data that you're accessing through the web map services is being read directly from the IMAP database. And so, you know, as we have all this data coming in from a variety of sources, the advantage of using the IMAP web map services is that that data is, you know, you're reading the live data. So there's not some kind of sync process or, you know, that type of thing. Each time somebody loads a map that pulls data from the IMAP uh, web map services, it's pulling that data directly from the database. So, you know, all of the various ways that data has been entered into IMAP, um, you're always seeing the current data that's in the IMAP database. Okay, so some quick points about when you may want to use uh, the IMAP web map services for your own uh, maps. Essentially, you know, probably one of the most powerful reasons is when you want to overlay the data with existing data that you have within your own organization or data that is not uh, currently on IMAP. So that could be within your own desktop GIS software, could be in ArcGIS Online, could be in a combination of places, but, you know, it's somewhere uh, you can overlay uh, different data and include the IMAP layers within that analysis or in that map view. Uh, again, as I just mentioned, you know, when you always want to have the most current data, the main advantage of using web map services is you don't need to, or you repeatedly uh, perform an export of the IMAP data um, the data is that you're reading through the web map services is always the most current. For when you want to visualize uh, many records at once, so um, 
essentially, if you use the IMAP main map interface, um, there's a, a very uh, powerful feature, which is the hexagon view, which groups of records together in the, the hexagon layer that, that you see that's on the uh, map interface. I find that very useful uh, when, you know, trying to get a sense of how many records are in an area, but we realize that sometimes people do have a need to actually view those uh, individual records at a zoomed out or a small scale uh, map. So this is a one way that you can potentially uh, view all of those data records at that sort of zoomed out scale. And um, when you only are in need of a limited number of data fields, so in a, in a moment we'll show the fields that are available through the IMAP web map service, but keep in mind that it is not, um, it does not represent all of the extensive data fields that are available for all of the different data types in IMAP and bases. So a uh, quick note on when you may not want to uh, use the web map services. Again, as I just mentioned, when you're in need of a very specific uh, data fields that you can only get through the um, uh, web map services or you know, when you're in need of those data fields which are um, within each of the, the records. Next, if you're working with a very large amount of data in some type of advanced desktop GIS analysis. Um, now, this is a bit of a, a double-sided coin because we here at the Heritage Program do utilize web map services for some of our analysis. Um, but some of the, uh, the tools that are available in, Arc, in the desktop ArcGIS software, uh, you know, modify the input data or perform some action on the data that requires some, you know, write permissions. Um, so if you're having issues, you, you may not be able to use the web map services for some of these particularly advanced uh, analysis in desktop GIS software. And um, next would be when using ArcMap. Um, you know, we, we've sort of struggled with uh, the ability to interact with uh, the web map services in ArcMap. If you are using ArcMap 10.6 or higher and are only in need of the public uh, data layers, so that would be confirmed uh, presence records, for example, you may be able to use ArcMap, but in general, um, you may struggle with some performance issues when using ArcMap with the web map services due to the volume of data that, that is available through the web map services. Okay, so jumping uh, to the fields that, that are currently being served on the IMAP web map service layers, this is a, a, a breakdown of the, uh, by layer of what fields are available and thanks to Heidi Kraling for creating this data table. And essentially, the other good news is that as of this month, we have added uh, several new fields so in case you have already interacted with the web map service layers to some extent in the past, um, you may want to uh, double check that these new fields are, are available to you. So it has, you know, some of the, the core fields for each data type, um, you know, the classic who, what, where, when type of fields, uh, you know, the ability to sort of have uh, different taxonomic levels um, in, in, aside from just species. And uh, again, the newer layers that are in there are uh, projects, count the county in which the record is located or counties if it's a polygon and spans multiple counties. The PRISM uh, or as it's titled in IMAP3, the Invasive Species Management Area. Um, is now a, a new field. We're uh, happy that that's in there now. And also, we do have a source uh, unique ID field. So if some type of bulk upload has been performed um, and the data has that information available, 
that is now being shared as well. So that, that may be useful um, if you want to sort of do some type of relationship between your own data that has a unique ID and it's been submitted to IMAP, you may be able to set up some type of relate or join to uh, match up that data. And it's pretty similar on the not detected side. Um, the only slight exception here is that we do share this presumed eliminated field, uh, which is an admin toggled field, which we're hoping to make use of in the future for various analysis. Um, and on the treatment side, um, fairly, fairly, uh, fairly basic in terms of the standard treatment fields that are available to any signed in user, essentially. So that's a, that's a quick overview of the, of the data fields. And I next just want to reiterate um, what platforms and what software you can use to with the IMAP web map services. So this is a table that Heidi and I created, um, and I've updated it slightly. And basically the, the theme that will sort of emerge here is that your best uh, you'll probably have the most success using the IMAP web map services with either ArcGIS Pro or ArcGIS Online. Um, ArcMap, you know, it, you may be able to uh, use it in certain situations, um, but we think you'll probably have more success with uh, ArcGIS Pro and ArcGIS Online. But on that note, uh, the good news is that uh, when interacting with the IMAP web map services, you actually can utilize just a free ArcGIS Online account, so it does not have to be affiliated with any paid plan. Um, the reason being is that any data you access is being you know, hosted by IMAP, so you're not actually saving any data to your ArcGIS Online account, and because that's the situation in which you would need to have some type of paid plan. So that, we feel, should be very helpful. Um, you know, any public ArcGIS Online account, which you can just sign up uh, for, uh, should work with the web map services. And uh, again, uh, ArcMap may run into some limitations. And also, if there are any users of open source GIS software, such as QGIS, uh, I just tested this recently, and you should be able to interact with the various layers from IMAP uh, in QGIS as well. All right, so now jumping into uh, how do you actually make use of the web map services for all the introductions. Basically, this is the key URL that you will want to uh, use. And when you go here, you will see, as I'll show in a minute, a uh, list of layers which you have access to. And so if you're not seeing the layer that you're interested in, such as not detected, um, you may need to sign in. And another quick note is that um, if you are using the data in ArcGIS Online, you you may get a pop-up message that will ask you to authenticate, and that's asking for your IMAP username and password. As I mentioned, the, the permissions are all tied to your IMAP account. Um, but this, this pop-up box is not always clear, so we just, just wanted to point that out. So I think now I'm going to, actually I'll have one more slide here. Also, when you're in the um, list of layers and the, the IMAP layers that are available, you may notice um, that for present data, whether it be confirmed or unconfirmed, you'll see four different data types, points, lines, polygons, and polygon centroids. And for not detected in treatment records, you'll see polygons and polygon centroids. The reason we do this is with the centroids is to provide better visualization of the data. So
So, in other words, if you have an area on the map that is a 100 square meter area polygon, that is not going to display when zoomed to a statewide scale. It's just too small. So, the value of having the polygon centroids layer is to be able to see those smaller polygons when you're at that small scale or zoomed out, uh, you know, map. And the other thing to note is that um, when you create a record in IMAP3, uh, for presence records at least, you are given the option to create a point line or a polygon. And so, you want to make sure that you're always uh, making use of all of the, the data layers that are available. Okay, so with that, let me just give a quick tour of the um, what the web map services look like. So I'm going to share Firefox. And essentially, hey, is that showing up on, on web? Okay. Showing up for you. <laughs> That's okay. Um, so this is the URL. What happens when you go to the URL? This is what you should see. Uh, again, imapinvasive.natureserve.org/slash/rest/slash/services. Now, um, let me go home. So this is what it should look like to a public user who is not signed in. And so we'll see here that. Um, we have some of the reference layers available, and then our public data being the uh, searched areas and presences, and that's about it, because this is what data is available to um, the public when you just view uh, IMAP invasives as a general user, not signed in. So again, uh, when you want to view more information, what you'll want to see, use is this login tool up at the top right. And once you're there, it will prompt you for a username and password. And this is what I meant by it's a, sometimes a bit confusing because it's not particularly clear that it's prompting you for your IMAP username and password, which is your email address and password. So that's what I'll enter here. And now that I've done that, now I'll see all of the layers which this particular user account has access to view. So once you're here, um, essentially I'll just sort of uh, show what each of the layers uh, looks like that has the multiple um, data types. So we'll, we'll go to our unconfirmed presence records, for example. And if you recall what I, what I mentioned earlier, the, this is sort of broken down into two components, the map server, which is at the top level, and then each of these individual feature servers, which, are, which contain each of these points, lines, uh, and polygons, and centroids layer. So, you can then go into any of those layers and view more specifics about the layer, including, you know, what fields are available, sort of as I referenced from the table earlier. But really, you don't necessarily have to look at all of this information. Um, it's really, I think, being here on this top level for unconfirmed presences, for example, um, this is a URL that you'll use to get access to the to the um, layers in your own map. Okay, I'm just going to jump back into PowerPoint real quick. So. 
One, a few other quick considerations. If you're finding that the filters are um, not working as you'd like or a bit slow, you may need to filter by ID value. And uh, so those, I can go into more detail at a later time, but essentially when you're referencing something like a species, what you'll see is an ID value of each of the URLs for each species. That's uh, a state species ID, which you can use to filter uh, in the map. And this should provide much faster uh, loading of, of the data. So I'll, I'll show that interactively in a moment. And, but on, along with that note, if you are performing some type of filter on the you know, web map service layers, you'll want to make sure that you actually filter each of the uh, four or two layers that you're using just to make sure all of the data is um, you know, being filtered to your criteria. Okay. So now I'll just jump back in to show you what that all looks like. So essentially um, what I'm going to do is go to a blank map in ArcGIS Online. And so I'm currently signed into ArcGIS Online, but really anyone can go to ArcGIS.com slash home slash web map slash viewer dot HTML. Uh, regardless of whether you're signed in or not, and it should bring you to this blank map. Um, so again, you don't necessarily need to have a you know paid subscription to ArcGIS Online to to utilize these layers pretty quickly. So in my unconfirmed layer, jumping back to the uh, web map service layers listing, what I want to do here is copy the URL of each of these layers in the list for unconfirmed presences. And then I'll go to my map and add content using the expand. Expand, yep. Yeah. <clears throat> <It's small. clears throat> Thank you. Yep. So I'll use the add data tool up at the top left. And I want to add a layer from the web. And you can leave uh, what type of data are you referencing to the default ArcGIS server uh, web service. And then I'll just paste that URL that I copied from the uh, web map service layer listing and select add. Now I'll be prompted to sign in because the unconfirmed map layers are only available to signed in users. And once I've done that, now you can see, uh, since I'm zoomed out to a very wide area, it's loading a lot of data, but the data is starting to load in. But to help it out, let me zoom in just a little bit to Albany area, and it should load in the data a little bit faster at a smaller scale. So I could also now make sure I have the other layers by uh, copying the URL for each of those. And adding it right into our map. So now I have points and lines. Let me get polygons as well. and also get the polygon centroids. Okay, perfect. So now I have all of that data added to the map. Um, at this point, it's just basically like using any other layer in ArcGIS Online. Um, so you can change the symbology of what the uh, what it looks like on the map. So for instance, for polygons, I could change it to a totally different color. And now they're orange. 
I can also view the attribute table, and it's probably going to load a lot of data. Well, not too much. Um, so I can at least take a look at those data fields, which I showed earlier, uh, in a table view where you can sort by, say you wanted to see the most recent entries. And at that point, um, you can also get a link back to the original uh, record in case you wanted to open it in IMAP. And you can just generally see uh, any of the other data that, that's available specific to that record. You can also select a record on uh, the map and you'll get the pop-up with all of the corresponding data. Or if you wanted to apply a filter, that would be over on the left side, the yellow filter icon, where you can then uh, set any criteria such as, let's try jurisdiction is New York, and it won't change the view much, but that's where you apply all of your filter criteria is on the left side. So that's, that's a very quick overview um, of interacting with the layers in something like um, ArcGIS Online. Uh, and so what I now want to just show is a few uh, examples to maybe provide some inspiration for some of the capabilities that are available here in the IMAP Web Map Services. So I think I'm going to start uh, here over on the right. Um, this is a map that um, Hillary Moser from the Finger Lakes Institute put together. And uh, essentially what she was interested in was just a quick overview of where water chestnut records were in relationship to wetlands. So um, she already had data available from uh, Finger Lakes Prism for wetlands and she added that to the map. And then after that, we um, just shared information about how to load the web map service layers into the map and help provide a query. And essentially this is the quick result. And I, this really uh, was a pretty quick process. Um, and just to serve a, a quick example of, um, you know, you have different data you wanna bring together you know, with IMAP information and using web map services is just a quick, quick way to put together these really great, quick, you know, visualizations of data. The next quick example is a small dashboard we're working on for sort of the Southern Adirondack specific to uh, knotweed infestation. And what we're sort of trying to put together here is a uh, overlay of where are confirmed presence records for knotweed along with any treatments that have been uh, conducted as well as not detected records. And so again, this is in ArcGIS Online. It is using the ArcGIS Web App Builder tool, which is available um, to those with an organizational ArcGIS Online account. And you can see as we, you know, move and pan the map that the, these data um, figures on the left side update to the data we have in our extent, in the map extent. So hopefully this shows, you know, that you can use this information when creating something like a dashboard to take a look at, um, to take a look at the data visually, but also, you know, have numeric, um, representation of the data, uh, all being, you know, sourced directly from the IMAP web map service. So if you use the IMAP interface to then add a bunch of treatment information, uh, presences, not detected survey information, and reloaded this page, you would have the most current information in this dashboard. And 
the final quick uh, uh, example I'll show is an aquatic dashboard that Boris Swayziak is working on. And the reason I want to highlight this is for two reasons. One, um, there's a quick way to just have filtered data that's being pulled directly from the IMAP web map service, which is over here. Um, but also, we actually use this data in an analysis uh, to generate um, what we're describing as the aquatic invasive species dashboard. So in ArcGIS Pro, we actually utilize um, the web map service layers in our analysis to generate um, these figures for status of various invasive species per water body. So in Oneida Lake, we, and each of these water bodies, we've split out the status for each of these key invasive species as to whether or not the species has never been surveyed for previously, surveyed uh, without any presence records created, or surveyed with presence records created. So again, we didn't have to uh, perform any exports uh, or anything like that. We just pulled the data directly from IMAP and ran the analysis and then uploaded it into ArcGIS Online and then integrated it with the IMAP layers to visualize all of the data. So that's sort of a quick you know, overview of, of bringing together different data sets um, to visualize IMAP data with your own information. And so on that note, the final quick demo I, I'll show before I open it up to some discussion and questions uh, is actually how to utilize the, these layers in ArcGIS Pro. So what I'm going to do is I'm back in our, the main list of layers. Um, and in this example, what I want to do is, is grab the not detected layers. So I'm going to go into not detected species. And I'm going to uh, right click here for not detected species. Uh, and what this will give me is not detected species polygon. So I'll copy the URL for that layer. And now I'm going to go into ArcGIS Pro as long as I can share that with the WebEx. ArcGIS Pro. Okay. And that showing up, Peggy? Yeah. Okay. So what I have here is uh, a map that I've just added uh, something, uh, a layer called NIPAD, which is New York Protected Areas Database that is maintained by New York Natural Heritage Program. And uh, that is being represented by these pink uh, polygons. And what I also have are presence records for hemlock woolly adelgid. And turn those layers on. Should load in. All right, may have to toggle those again. But what I'm, what I'm going to add now into the map are uh, the not detected layers, uh, one of which I just copied into the clipboard, and so I'll paste that. And here we go. So now we have all not detected species records. And to help visualize this better, I'm also going to get the centroids layer. And so again, in ArcGIS Pro, um, the way you add the data is up in the Add Data button, and then under Data from Path. And then I can go ahead and paste the uh, other not detected layer representing the not detected polygon centroids to the map, and now they'll appear. So now this is all not detected data. So what I want to do is filter it down to hemlock woolly adelgid. And so the way I'll do that is go into the layer and then under definition query, I'll add a new definition query. 
And here I will set the jurisdiction species ID to 1281, which I had in the previous slide. Click OK. And now the data for the points is filtered. So I'll also want to do the same thing for the polygons layer to make sure it's an accurate representation. So I'll add a new definition query for jurisdiction species ID of 1281. And you can see now the, the data is filtered. Um, now we're just seeing areas in which um, have been surveyed for hemlock woolly adelgid, and you know I'm overlaying that with, with the NIPAD near protected areas access database um, to see potentially where there could be opportunities for future survey work on um, either public land or at least you know, protected areas. And so I could turn on the layers for the confirmed observations for hemlock woolly adelgid. I'm not quite sure why they're not loading. We may need to try adding them back to the map. So to see the confirmed hemlock woolly delgid records, um, I'm going to go back into this same URL, imapinvasives.naturesurve.org slash arcgis slash rest slash services. And I want the public uh, presence layers, so that would be confirmed observations. And I'm going to copy the URL for the presence, uh, confirmed uh, presence points. And I'll go ahead and add data, add data from path, paste the URL, and with any luck, hopefully this should work this time. Okay, there we go. So they're loading in. So now I have the unfiltered view of all of the presence points. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just get the polygon, or just get the polygon uh, centroids as well. So now I'll just want to filter those down to jurisdiction species ID 1281. ArcGIS Pro is a little slow right now. And just to point out that users don't have to know the species ID. There's a field for scientific name or common name. You could you could apply the filter that way as well. It's just John knows that ID off the top of his head, so he can input it and go quicker. Well, and as I mentioned, you may if you try searching by name, um, you, you may run into some slowdowns in loading. So if you, yes, yeah, so that's a great point, Heidi. If, I would start with the names because it's certainly easier, but if you run into any slowdowns, um, you may want to change to using the ID. Right now, I'm not sure why. I think ArcGIS Pro is completely straight. Does it make a difference if you turn them off? I know in ArcMap, sometimes just turning the layers off and then doing what you want to do with them. Sometimes. That's possible, yeah. Or it's going to completely crash. Okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's interesting. Um, has crashed. But suffice to say, normally that's. <laughs> Hasn't quite happened, but that's pretty much the uh, what I wanted to share overall. Um, regardless of that happening, um, the only final note I just want to make very briefly is, uh, as of a few weeks ago, the IMAP3 main map interface now supports adding your own web map service layers to the main map interface. So um, to just briefly highlight this, what I'm now going to do is load a um, oh, PowerPoint probably wasn't sharing. But 
What I'm going to do is show a layer that's hosted outside of IMAP3, a layer that's hosted by New York State Parks. And so they have a web map service for trails. And what I can do is actually uh, copy the URL of that, of their uh, web map service layer that they're sharing. And I can then go into the IMAP map interface and let's sort of zoom to New York. And if you go into the open and close layers uh, tab, you should now see an option that says add layer from URL. And so I've copied the URLs and I'll just paste it into here. And I'll say NYS Park Trails. And it's been added to the table of contents. So now I can open uh, the map layers. And then under added resources, we have New York State Parks Trails. And so now uh, if I zoom to any particular state park, um, I should see the data that Parks is publicly sharing uh, for trails. And so you could then, you know, overlay, you know, different data sets with the main IMAP interface to really uh, um, sort of take a look at, at those layers with also having the advantage of having the IMAP uh, map interface as well. So, and I should be able to identify, maybe running a bit slow right now, um, but I should be able to identify any of the layers um, that I've even, that I've added. So here I've just selected a trail and I can actually get the full details that Parks is sharing about that trail um, here uh, right, in, right in the map. And again, you know, you can look at this in relationship to all of the IMAP data that's there. Okay, so with that, I think that's pretty much, uh, you know, I, I realize it's really quick overview and there are definitely, you know, plenty of details that, uh, you know, people still might be interested in. So, uh, you know, we'll certainly share this uh, PowerPoint on the website. Um, we also will, are always available for questions um, at imapsinvasives uh, at dec.ny.gov. And um, with that, we could, we'd be glad to take any questions if anyone wants to share over, over the WebEx or if there's any that have come through on the chat. There are a few that are coming in on the chat line. And someone had inquired about a species list being available within IMAP, and I don't believe that you can currently get a New York species list from IMAP. I have been distributing an Excel spreadsheet of our tracked species within New York, um, and maybe we can make that available on our New York IMAP website so that folks can go there and grab it. In the interim, uh, if there's a particular species of which you're interested in, uh, viewing the ID, you can always go to the menu up at the top left uh, and one of the first option, uh, if you're not signed in like I am here, is jurisdiction species list. And once you're there, you can then load New York um, and view, uh, you know, a particular species. Um, you'd have to go one by one, but it, at least if you're interested in knowing a few different values um, as a stopgap, that, that could help. And then we have another question. Can you explain again why only confirmed public records can be used in the desktop version of ArcMap and, way it, and why it may not work well? Sure. So essentially, um, two reasons. Uh, first being that, um, well, okay, so for ArcMap 10.6 and above, that is the only version that works with more than 1,000 layer, uh, 1,000 uh, features within a particular web map service layer. So pretty much uh, ArcMap 10 point, ArcMap lower than 10.6 just won't work at all. ArcMap 10.6 and above, 
you can view the public layers because they don't require authentication. Um, we are currently working with NatureServe on determining if we can get the layers that require a login um, to be uh, compatible with, with ArcMap 10.6 or higher. But unfortunately, if you add those layers currently, they will work, but what you'll see is just the map service layer. So sort of what I described earlier as just that image uh, file that's being returned, you won't get the full feature access at this time, unfortunately. Um, again, we are working with NatureServe to um, hopefully improve that functionality, uh, but that's sort of the current limitation that we're up against. Okay, and the next question, is the add layer from URL option only available to certain users? I do not see that option on the map currently. Oh, uh, you know, I think I know why that probably is. So if you are not signed into uh, ArcGIS Online, uh, and I have this box in the way, okay, here we go. Let me go to a new browser window and um, if you just go to the public version, it might bring me to signed in. Here we go, yep. Okay, so right now you'll notice there is no add button up at the top left. The key here is just selecting modify map up in the top right. And then this add tool should appear. I'm not quite sure why they do that. I don't know why it's not just always there, but um, hopefully that solves that particular issue. Okay. See. Am I correct in understanding that my Forest Pest Survey 123 submission sync immediately with IMAP and therefore I don't need to use both applications? So, um, there's a few things there. Um, I think if you're asking um, that you won't need to use the web map services from the Survey123 form, um, that's correct. Basically, the, uh, the forest pest tool, you're, you're correct. The, the vision, um, once it's fully up and running uh, later this winter, is that those records will crosswalk directly from Survey123 into IMAP, similar to the way our collector tool works. Um, so the short answer to your question, if I understand it correctly, is yes. Uh, you'll Once they're crosswalked, you only need to look at the data in IMAP itself. You won't have to look at it in ArcGIS Online or other, uh, an external place. Okay, I didn't miss one, I apologize. ArcGIS Pro is also desktop, yes? Um, You'd have to ask Esri. Um, I, there, there have been a few names for it going around. I think the current name is ArcGIS Pro. Um, if, again, if I'm understanding the question correctly. Um, I, I do know that it is generally included in any current Arc, or like Esri account, so you probably do have access to it. Um, in some capacity if you have a current Esri account. Um, hopefully that answers that question. Okay, and the next, can we download data from your IMAP service? And then there's a follow-up. Um, actually, I mean on the IMAP Invasives website, when you took the New York State Parks trails layer and added it to the IMAP site. Oh, I see, I see. Um, if you're not seeing the option to add the, the data, you may need to clear the cache in your browser because that, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, that feature is very recently added within the past week or two. Um, and we have noticed some issues where sometimes your browser's cache uh, will save an older version of the, of the site. And so if you are having trouble, I'd recommend, um, like, let's see, I think I can even do it right here in Firefox. Uh, I believe it's Control-Shift-Delete. Yeah, 
Okay, so I'm in Firefox here, assuming this is coming through on the WebEx. I'm in Firefox. Uh, I clicked Control Shift Delete. And what I would do is go into everything and uh, uncheck everything except, uh, I'm sorry, uncheck everything except cache and then just click clear. And once that's done, just try refreshing IMAP and it should come through. Uh, if not, just email us and we'll uh, help troubleshoot. And so, okay, the next, so I did see the question, can we download data from your map service and uh, what is the process to add data in IMAP service? Uh, all right, I'll start with the first, the first one. Uh, can you download data from the map service? Um, I mean, essentially, if you're, if you're using the data uh, in ArcGIS Pro or something like that, you are effectively sort of downloading it in a sense every time you make a request. Um, I do believe, though, that the export data feature is disabled when using the IMAP uh, web map services on a desktop GIS. So if you if you want to download data, I would encourage you to use the download uh, the export tool within the IMAP map interface. Um, and then uh, to the other question, uh, what is the process to add your data in the IMAP service? Um, I'm not sure I fully follow the question. Um, I mean, any, as I mentioned earlier, the data is being referenced directly from IMAP, so any data that's, uh, that you create in the IMAP interface will uh, come through in the IMAP web map services. Hopefully that's, hopefully that's the gist of the question. And we do have a document of instructions. Um, and I believe that is now available on the New York IMAP website as well. So look there under resources or I forget which tab it might be under, but there are instructions that John stepped through today. Those are available in a document on our website. And I'm very sorry, I'm just realizing I think I, we missed our introduction. So in the room is Heidi Craigling. Oh. <laughs> I'm very sorry. We... Actually, I probably wasn't in the room when you started. Right, what, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hello. <laughs> Um, I mean, if anyone has any other questions, if you'd like to unmute, um, yep. feel free. Otherwise, if you have any chat box questions. Um, if not, again, um, stay tuned for the um, next month's webinar, which is hosted by Jennifer Dean on confirming records in IMAP. Um, so uh, just stay up to date on NY IMAP or at nyimapinvasives.org, um, and you'll find the details about that webinar, as well as we'll post the uh, recording from this webinar there, along with the presentation. Um, and otherwise, I think that's about it. So thank you so much uh, for joining. Again, we'll just stick around a little bit longer if anyone has any lingering questions, but otherwise, I think that should be about it. And thanks very much. And let us know if we can be of assistance.